Things are moving so fast, it might be hard to see the forest through the trees. But remember, this entire year plus that we've been tracking the insanity of the macro economy, what we've been focusing on is the Federal Reserve. And we distilled what we want to see most of all is understanding how the total amount of liquidity, the total amount of money in the economy gets affected by what the Fed does. And this is all you know, represented in the net liquidity chart that we've shown. But what's most important to understand is interest rates, uh, the Fed repo, uh, reverse repo facility, the Treasury General account, all of these things that are being done affect how much liquidity is in the market, the cost of capital, where money goes to effectively be treated best. What you need to know is this, the Fed has just undone one half of all of the work they've done over the last 14 months to reduce the liquidity in the economy, to fight inflation. They've just undone that with what we're calling stealth QE or sneaky QE, whatever you want to call it, the Fed has injected a nominal amount of up to $2 trillion, $2 trillion into the economy with its efforts to bail out the banks, with its efforts to backstop the financial institutions across the world. Now, it hasn't all come into the economy yet. If you go to my Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash Trades. It's linked in the description of this video. If you're not following me there, I highly encourage you to follow me there. You will see some charts that I've, some some uh, analysis that I've reposted today, specifically from Lynn Alden uh, and specifically from uh, Zero Hedge. There's a bunch of stuff showing how this is happening. I don't care that everyone's focused on inflation. The Fed may still keep hiking rates because they need to keep fighting inflation. But guess what they just did? They just unleashed the biggest bazooka cannon of new cash into the economy to fight off the disaster that is happening across the banking sector. There is fear across the entire global banking sector, not just here in the United States, because of this wild roller coaster that's happened with interest rates. And when we, we said over the past year, something is going to break and the Fed will need to step in and fix it. And when they do, that is the bat signal to load up on risk assets. Now, I'm not saying that everything has been done yet. I'm not saying it's up only. I, this is crazy because you have on one side this bearish, you know, sort of ongoing storyline of the Fed continually needing to fight inflation. Inflation is certainly not the genie that's gone back in the bottle overnight. But then they've also changed the way they're calculating infl inflation, which I predicted earlier this year would lead them to declare an early victory. Now, based on that new calculation method, which even economists like Peter Schiff and people who are obsessed with this stuff, they don't even know exactly how inflation is calculated anymore. So at a certain level, those numbers, uh, I believe, will continue in some way to come down. This will allow the Fed to at least stop hiking or hike less uh, I think that the next uh, meeting they'll do a 25 point hike because we've seen in Europe, despite the un uncertainty, there was a 50 point hike. The point is, uh, the, the the 50 point is, uh, what we're seeing here is an absolute monstrous amount of new money being injected into the economy. You can see Bitcoin just responds right in line with the new liquidity in the markets. Now, there's also this pretty uncanny, unsettling war on cryptocurrency happening in the United States. We've never seen anything like this. Operation Choke Point 2 is what we're calling it. Uh, and we're seeing banks effectively get the hammer brought down on them. But then we're also seeing on the other side, uh, the court system is coming in to really right some of these wrongs. We're seeing the SEC get their court case pretty much thrown out against the Binance US acquisition of Voyager. We're seeing a lot of the courts start to uphold the rights of citizens. It's important to realize that the world takes a long time to shake out what will and what won't be the rules of the road here. Uh, but I'm always been, I've always been a believer here that in the end, this technology is designed to withstand this kind of attack. It's, it's purposefully designed. Bitcoin and crypto are designed to not be able to be shut down. And as more liquidity flows into the economy and more liquidity starts to predict that there is more appetite for risk, I do believe that this is very good for Bitcoin. Now, of course, we have two very oppositional forces, the regulatory wave, and then you have essentially the quantitative easing wave, the, the necessary injection of money into the economy. We are living through history. There is no other way to put it. Uh, we could see some very scary plunges here. We could see some very, very aggressive pumps here. The main thing is to be, I think, slowly but surely uh, that my strategy, again, if you're investing in crypto in 2023, you look back, 
Maybe this is a spiritual low on the chart and we end up going upwards towards that million dollar price point on Bitcoin that I believe we'll eventually get to. Guess what? People in this moment would probably call you crazy for buying crypto. And maybe you gotta be a little bit crazy. Uh, but the reality is that this stuff is what Bitcoin was designed for. Hedging against the banks being bailed out is literally in the genesis block of Bitcoin. It's what Satoshi intended this technology to hedge against. So what we're seeing right now is the most historic, biggest moment for Bitcoin that we've ever seen. It's no surprise that it has been incredibly bullish. But at the same time, there is, an, there is a full-on regulatory war against this technology. And I'm optimistic that over time, there will become sensible regulations and, and sensible ways uh, for people to operate in this industry. I'm eternally, eternally optimistic. And in times like this, you absolutely have to be. I hope these videos have been helping you out. If they have, make sure to subscribe with that bell notification on as we've literally had at least one video come out almost every day for the past uh, several weeks. And today will be two videos. So if you guys are enjoying the constant updates and these videos have been informative and helpful, make sure you subscribe and put that bell notification on, notifications set to all. Uh, and I will be bringing you as much up to the date content, up to the minute content as I can, because this stuff is changing super duper fast. It's, it's incredible how fast it's changing. Uh, as always, I'm extremely grateful just to be able to be a part of this industry and to have such a, a vibrant community. Y'all mean the world to me. As always, I'm Elio Trades. Watch this video or this video. I'm not sure where it's going to pop up. Watch that video. It's even better than this one. Have some really cool documentary stuff coming. But yeah, this is history. The Fed just undid everything that they've been trying to fight against in pretty much one week. They've undone 14 months of QT, quantitative tightening. They've injected more cash to effect effectively offset that. Now, does that mean that we go back up halfway to 69K? Well, I mean, halfway to 69K is, is 30, uh, <laughs> 34 and a half, right? So we're not actually too far away from uh, 34 and a half. If you think about it, that's, uh, that's less than a 50% pump or about a 50% pump from here. So um, yeah, wild times. All I can say is, I appreciate each one of you. If you guys are enjoying this wild ride or at least finding uh, some silver linings in it, kudos to you. Making it through the bear market is absolutely insane. Uh, and it's never it was never meant to be easy, but the rewards I believe will be there. Uh, and I'll be here to cover the whole industry for you. So thank you so much for rocking with me and I'll see you, on, see you very soon on the next episode. Bye.